And now over to Eric Pauli Impanzon. This weekend on television, I watched a group of average humans pay a man to come inside their house and whisper to their behaviorally challenged dogs. After observing an improvement in their mangy pets, the humans' eyes began to discharge a salty aqueous solution, which I have since learned is referred to commonly as tears. Apparently a signal of strong human emotion. Our station marketing staff informs me that emotion is popular right now, and I, I can easily ride this emo gravy train with stories about disastrous ducks or iguanas with ED. So, in an effort to boost ratings through the exploitation of cute animals, Type TV brings you headlines from the animal kingdom. The internet is buzzing about Perky, the duck with more resurrections than Jack Bauer on 24. Perky was shot by a hunter, stuffed in a fridge, and two days later found alive by the hunter's wife. Perky was taken to a veterinary clinic where her heart stopped on the operating table. Doctors presumed she was dead, but later diagnosed her as got better. She is now making a recovery. While Perky did receive some medical attention, perhaps it was her lack of insurance that kept her doctors from running a simple test that would not only benefit her, but this procedure has the potential of saving the lives of countless waterfowl. But Perky's doctors wouldn't spare this welfare bird the time to test for zombie DNA. Well, we are used to insurance companies and doctors screwing over the average American who can't afford decent health care. You can be damn sure we are not going to sit by while the country is overrun by zombie birds because Blue Cross considers testing for zombie bird DNA an elective procedure. Just like it considers a doctor using a sterilized medical chainsaw to cut a zombie duck's head off an elective procedure. Elective procedure? You tell that to those children in Tallahassee when they can't play outside because the parks are overrun by zombie ducks biting their faces and harassing the old people. This demon spawn, foul of the netherworld, has been shot twice, frozen, and is just asking for more. Even the wolfman couldn't put up a fight like that. While the medical community may disagree, it does not take a degree in biology to tell that Perky the Duck is in league with the devil. If the medical community could put down their happy sappy New England Journal of Medicine and pick up the Necronomicon, we would not have the undead avian flu spreading across our country, now would we? We turn our attention now to a story sure to bring a tear to the eye of every man listening. Gentlemen, it pains me to deliver the news that scissor-happy veterinarians in Antwerp's Aquatopia have decided to amputate the penis of Belgium sweetheart Mozart the Iguana. During mating season, Mozart was callously and cruelly spurned by a certain female iguana that for her protection will not be named. However, a Google map to her habitat will be provided on our website. After being turned down by the female, Mozart's penis has remained erect for over a week, growing red and swollen. Fearing infection, his captors have decided that amputation will not be too traumatic because iguanas have two penises. Now there are things that I have two of that I would be quite pissed off if somebody came along and chopped off. And having done a recent poll, data shows that men would statistically take no comfort in having their penis cut off, even with the second one on hand. In fact, I know many men who feel that having two penises would be an advantage that would only dramatically improve their sex lives, with or without a partner. The only source of consolation for Mozart is that he has recently signed a deal to appear in a series of public service announcements for erectile dysfunction treatments. Penis. And now, to Michael Gorman. 